Hey everybody, how's it going? Welcome to episode number 520 of No DQ and A video, right here on NoDQ.com, the YouTube channel, and No DQ and A videos affiliate, RingsideNews.com. Coming off a largely controversial edition of Monday Night Raw, a lot of negative feedback regarding this week's show. I'll get to that here in a second. Got your questions from spring.me slash Aaron Rift. So let's get started with the first one today from Gravy Sticks. So John Cena buried Bray Wyatt and killed his momentum and made him seem irrelevant to a lot of people. Then Jericho helps Wyatt get some momentum back, only to see Super Cena imitation Lesnar destroy him again. Why do this? He seemed very promising as a top heel. A lot of people were not happy about how the Wyatt family was handled on Raw this week. Raw got one of the worst responses on NoDQ.com for the poll that I post every week. Many people saying it's the worst Raw of the year. When I watched it, I didn't really feel that the Wyatts were buried. I mean, their role is to be a top heel faction, but at the end of the day, the focus is going to be on the main event. So I wasn't surprised that John Cena used them as punching bags, and really nobody else should be surprised. It was clear at WrestleMania that Bray Wyatt is not going to be a guy that is going to be pushed as a top star in WWE, meaning he's not going to be pushed at, say, a Brock Lesnar level where he's going to be a dominant heel. Whatever damage was done to Bray Wyatt as being a potential top heel superstar, that damage was done at WrestleMania. And some will say that with Chris Jericho... Bray Wyatt was built back up a little bit. I didn't really feel that was the case. I've always felt since WrestleMania that Bray Wyatt was a upper mid-card heel, but when he's up against the top baby faces, he's going to lose. So I can't say that I was surprised by what happened at Raw. WWE is trying to build up John Cena for the main event against Brock Lesnar, and if John Cena went out there and destroyed like Heath Slater or something, it wouldn't mean anything. John Cena would need to go out there and destroy somebody who has some credibility. Now, maybe they could have picked somebody else besides Bray Wyatt. There's plenty of other heels. Maybe they could have done Ryback or Curtis Axel, and who knows what's going on with Ryback. He he tweeted that he's going to be gone for a while and then deleted it. But uh, whatever the case is, WWE went with the Wyatts to put over John Cena, and I don't feel... It was as bad as it could have been. I mean, you did have Mark Henry and Big Show come out and help John Cena. So it wasn't like he took out all three guys by himself. He had a little bit of help with Mark Henry and Big Show. So uh, to me, it wasn't that big of a deal. And I know some people feel that Bray Wyatt uh, could be a top guy, somebody at Brock Lesnar's level. But I just don't see that being the case at this point. So I can't say that I was all disappointed um, in how Raw ended. And I felt at the end of the day, you need to build up John Cena. And some people were saying, well, he's already super Cena as it is. But, you know, they have really made Brock Lesnar a monster. And they have to do something to think, to convince fans um, that John Cena might have a fighting chance against Brock Lesnar. So at this point, they need to build up John Cena. All right, this one comes from Popcorn Shower. Hey Aaron, what did you think of the Stardust and Gold Dust attack on the Usos after their match? And do you think it was a heel turn? If so, could it be because this rivalry needed more heat? Please answer in video. Well, it, it certainly looked to me like it was a heel turn, and I think it was long overdue. I wasn't really feeling the whole Stardust and Gold Dust act. To me, it had gotten stale very quickly. And uh, they were just two guys on the roster. They didn't really serve any significant purpose. And uh, if you're going to have a new feud with the Usos, uh, it only made sense to turn those guys heel. And um, I, I think it needed to be done. I think you needed to do something to uh, to get people interested in Stardust and Goldust again and give them something different. Uh, so I, I think it was the right move for sure. And, um, you know, if you're going to have these guys in a feud, it makes sense to have a babyface team against a heel tag team. Um, so I do think it was the right move. And I think that it was a good way to build up some heat in the tag team division because it, it's definitely cooled off. The tag team division 
um, was on fire, you know, a year back. But now uh, it, it, it's kind of gone back to how it was before where, uh, you know, the tag team titles aren't even defended on pay-per-view. It needed to be done. That's, that's all I'm going to say about that. And um, I think it was the right move. All right. This one comes from Dave451985. Good God, was that Bella segment horrible. How do they keep getting these segments when they clearly just will never be able to give even a half convincing performance? Well, the reason that WWE does these segments, they do them because the female audience enjoys them. I mean, that's the bottom line. These soap opera storylines uh, with the women, they do draw with that female audience. And, you know, you have Total Divas coming back in a few weeks. And, you know, WWE wants to, um, you know, get people talking about Total Divas and, and draw up interest in that as well. Um, so that's why they do it. And uh, yeah, the segments are usually train wrecks, and this one was no exception. Although I will say I thought Nikki did a decent job. I thought that she was all right. Brie, on the other hand, her crying was uh, completely unconvincing. Uh, wasn't a fan of it. Uh, thought it was very poor. Um, but yeah, I mean, it is what it is, and these segments do draw with the female audience, and that's why WWE does it. All right, this one comes from K Fabe Candy S. Hey, Aaron, which line was more ridiculous? I wish you die in the womb, or does he have a pulse? I will say that as much as I did enjoy Nikki and thought that she did a decent job, that was a terrible line at the end. It was just so over the top and ridiculous. Um, so it could have been better. It felt to me like that was a fed line that, you know, they told her to say that at the end to get the extra heat. Um, I, I felt she was doing good for the most part, and it, it sounded somewhat sincere and believable. Uh, but then at the end with that line, uh, yeah, that that did kind of ruin it at the end for me. But other than that, I thought Nikki did a decent job. All right, this one comes from Chris Mace 39628 Please answer in video. Do you see a Seth Rollins and Roman Reigns feud after Raw tonight? And could you see them in a match for Rollins' Money in the Bank briefcase? At this point, I'm expecting there to be a tag team match at Night of Champions. That, that seems to be the direction WWE is going in based off of what happened on Raw, where you have Roman Reigns and Dean Ambrose against Seth Rollins and Kane. And to me, I still see the Roman Reigns, excuse me, the Dean Ambrose and Seth Rollins feud going on. And as I talked about last week, um, you know, it makes sense for them to have their final blow off match at Hell in a Cell and, and do the Hell in a Cell stipulation for that. And, uh, you know, I was talking about how, you know, Night of Champions, they could do some kind of other match and, and to hold off until Hell in a Cell. So this seems to be a good idea here. Do a tag team match at Night of Champions, and that way you don't have to have um, Seth Rollins and Dean Ambrose in another one-on-one -on -one match. You can save that until Hell in a Cell and, and do that match stipulation to end the feud once and for all. Now, after that, will we see Roman Reigns and Seth Rollins? I mean, it's certainly a possibility. I'm still waiting on the triple threat match, uh, you know, the three members of the Shield going at it. But uh, something tells me we're not going to see that match for a while. And WWE is going to uh, keep Dean Ambrose and Roman Reigns um, as separate as possible, except for possibly in a tag team match situation. Um, so, yeah, I don't, I don't see... I don't see Roman Reigns getting involved with the Money in the Bank briefcase. I think that what's most likely going to happen is he will continue feuding with Kane or Randy Orton or whatever until Royal Rumble, then win the Rumble, and then get into the WrestleMania storyline. All right, one more question here from TLAIHO1. What do you think the future will hold for Rusev? Where do you see him in one year's time? Unfortunately, I see him as a sad comedy act like Kali. Well, that very well could be the case. And I know a lot of people, similar to Bray Wyatt, you know, they see Rusev potentially as being a massive heel superstar, uh, a top foreigner heel, maybe something similar to Yokozuna. I don't see that being the case. I think similar to Bray Wyatt, Rusev is a the guy they're building up as an upper mid-card heel. But... When he goes up against the top baby faces, he's going to lose. He's going to be fed to them. And I'm sure at that point some people will be upset. But 
you know, that's what WWE does. They build up these heel characters, but, you know, the baby faces are the bread and butter. They're the top draws, and uh, those are the guys that uh, are protected in the long run, and they're the top of the food chain. So, you know, guys like Rusev, guys like Bray Wyatt, uh, it's unlikely that they're ever going to be the face of the company as a, a heel performer. Yes, you had somebody like Yokozuna, who was a top monster heel, but WWE already has that in Brock Lesnar. So, you know, Rusev and Bray Wyatt are going to be underneath. And um, as far as Rusev being a comedy character, very well could be the case. It could be the same situation once they've uh, had him lose to the top stars. Uh, it, it's very possible he could, you know, when they don't know what else to do with him, uh, make him the next Kali and have him in the, the, the comedy segments. Um, don't see that being the case with Bray Wyatt. I think Bray Wyatt, they'll keep that character serious uh, for the time being. But Rusev, absolutely, I could see him becoming a comedy act at some point. So I'm, I'm warning you now, so don't get upset when it happens. All right, that'll wrap things up for this edition of No DQ and a Video. Thanks, as always, for watching. Subscribe if you haven't already. Tell a friend about No DQ and a Video. Share this video on Facebook and Twitter. Check out No DQ's discuss discussion group nodqforums.com. You can go there, check out the discussion group, chat with fans from around the world, and I will see you guys next time for another edition of No DQ&A Video.